just any CPU can be a waste of sand. It has to graduate to that level and join its peers like the 11900K and the 5800 XT. This is a review of the R5 4500, which is the contrivance of a truly big brain company approach to product design. In the meme sense, not in the actually big brain sense. So the 4500 is easily the worst CPU AMD has launched in quite a while. Now, we want to have one reservation here. There's still the 4100. We haven't looked at that one yet. So there's still hope. There could be worse yet. Let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by Lexar's Hades RGB RAM. Lexar's Hades RAM is available in DDR4-3200 and DDR4-3600 options and specializes by allowing LED synchronization, including for color, intensity, and speed changes. Lexar's Hades is looking to compete on both quality and price, and the RGB LEDs allow for easy matching with any build's color profile. Learn more at the link in the description below. So at the tail end of wearing ourselves out on the four new CPUs, the 5700X, 5600 non-X, the 5500, and now the 4500, we still have a couple more to go through because there's the upcoming 5800X3D. AMD is doing its best though at this point to make sure that everybody has the worst possible perception of AMD as a brand uh, and make sure it can really damage its brand credibility as much as possible before that 5800X 3D comes out. Because perhaps in AMD's big brain market in mind, uh, if you destroy your own reputation on your CPU product line first, you can then look like you're even better when you launch something that's not truly garbage. So to catch you up on the 4500 and why it is an utter waste of your time and the world's resources, uh, the water, for example, that was used for purifying the wafers that created the 4500 probably would have been better in just about anything else, like a, a toilet, for example. More useful there. Here's the spec sheet, though. The 4500 is a six-core, 12-thread part, but don't get too excited because it's Zen 2. And worse yet, it is a monolithic die. These parts, they're not even chiplets. They're monolithic approach, so they're repurposing failed APUs, things that probably had an IGP with a couple CUs that maybe didn't pass validation or something, and AMD needed to do something with them. So they collected them in this giant dumpster for a while until they had enough to just dump it onto the market and try and smother it with all of its shit that it had collected. The 4500 markets a frequency of 3.6 gigahertz base and 4.1 boost. It only has 11 megabytes of cache, which is even lower than the 19 on the 5500, which is also repurposed silicon. It's still a 65 watt TDP, but it has PCIe Gen 3 support. As some of our viewers pointed out in our 5500 review, the PCIe Gen 3 support is particularly dumb here because although it doesn't normally matter that much, AMD is self-owning its 6500 XT, which it decided to launch on a PCIe Gen 4x4. So if you only have PCIe Gen 3 and you're forced to run it in by four, you're basically cutting its ability, its bandwidth through the bus, through the protocol, in a half. And as for how much that matters, on the 5500 it would matter more than here on the 4500, which is binding itself up on CPU limitations instead. But uh, the end result is, as we saw in our benchmarks for the 6500 XT Gen 3 versus Gen 4, it's somewhere in the range of 15% in some scenarios of a difference just from that change alone. Anyway, uh, not a surprise that it's Gen 3, just because it is older silicon, it is Zen 2. So that's how it works. This $130 part, however, yes, that is how much it costs, would have better been never launched because it's exactly like the Intel 11 series, where Intel put out the 11900K as a stopgap, we have to do something, we're panicking solution approach to selling a product and damaged its reputation until the 12 series came out. Uh, these companies are publicly traded companies. We're not going to get into all the BS surrounding that, but some level of bureaucracy is at play here. But instead of just going, you know, we should just leave the e-waste, those pieces of silicon that failed validation as APUs, we should just leave them as the trash that they are instead of committing even more resources to make the entire rest of the package, bundle it all together, put it inside of a box, ship it around the world, and sell a piece of trash. It would have been better just left to rot but AMD is trying to reclaim as much money as it can, of course, as uh, especially publicly traded companies do, uh, legally obligated to do so. And the end result, we think, is just worse brand credibility, which is really unfortunate because AMD has worked for years at this point 
to climb up from being a, a punching bag with the FX series to being something that was delivering the punches instead to Intel, which was working hard at being a punching bag. But they've swapped roles now, we see. It's just a question of how long each one can remain in the more powerful position. Okay, so enough of the intro here. It's a $130 part, that's an insult. Uh, that puts it priced about the same as the i3-12100F. It's actually a little more expensive and not that different from the R5-5500, which we were already not positive about. You can guess how this will go. We'll try and make it entertaining. Let's get to it. Rainbow Six Siege starts us off for this dumpster fire of a CPU. In this one, the AMD R5-4500 ran at 363 FPS average, with lows at 241 FPS average. The frame times, proportionally speaking, are fine, but the overall performance is just embarrassing for where this CPU is situated. It's genuinely insulting that AMD is selling this for $130. The $122 Intel i3-12100F runs at 421 FPS average, 16% faster than the 4500, and it's somehow still $8 cheaper. Now, to be fair, we suspect that the 4500 won't stay at $130 very long, given how desirable it is at this price point, which is not at all. There's just nothing salvageable here. Even the 2700X is about the same as the R5 4500. And the 2700X came out in 2018 and was available for $200 for the back half of its life. AMD's 4500 matches that four years later and only reduced $70. At 1440p, the R5 4500 dropped to 316 FPS average. Now, compared only to AMD's own embarrassing disappointment, the R5 5500, of course, this almost looks good. But then you remember that the 5500 was also garbage value. The i3-12100F buries the 4500 six generations deep with a 10% lead and a cheaper price. Cyberpunk 2077 is hard enough to run on an actually good CPU, so it's no surprise that the 4500 manages to lag behind even the R5-3600 which was around $160 at its lowest long-term price point. And also it's behind the 2700X again, which is four years old. The i3-12100F has a staggering 26% lead, giving AMD PTSD flashbacks from its decade of getting slapped in the face by Intel. If this is a precursor for what AMD's future looks like and how much it cares, then the triumphant life of Ryzen will soon end. AMD, now is the time to try harder, not to sit back. The time for sitting back was a couple years ago, when Intel was busy releasing its own cluster F SKU of a roadmap. We'll bring back F1 2021 testing in this one. Perhaps it's one of the better illustrations of AMD's cattywampus bumfuzzle of a CPU, if only because F1 bottlenecks too early on just about everything else that's relevant this generation. Fortunately, the R5 4500 isn't relevant and never will be, so this limitation doesn't apply to it. The top of this chart can be ignored. Everything's about the same, they're all bouncing off of the same GPU limit, so we can't really see a difference between anything that's north of 340 FPS. The 12100F is well below that limit. It's at 300 FPS average, it manages to lead the R5 4500 CPU still by 21% for average FPS alone. It's also ahead in lows. Our point has probably been proven by now and we're only a couple games in, but we might as well just drive the dagger all the way through just in case AMD is wearing some sort of stab proof vest that's stuffed with dollar bills. And so for the next one, we'll show Counter-Strike Go. This one has the R5 4500 at 192 FPS average. It's finally managing to outdo AMD's own 2700X. So, wow, great. The path to stagnation is bleeding over from the Radeon team. Next thing you know, AMD will be launching a CPU with half the pins, just because it saves 12 cents and it looks happy. The 3600 manages to lead the 4500 by 24% here, which is embarrassing enough on its own. But then we see that the i3-12100F leads by an unbelievable 30% average FPS over the R5 4500 while maintaining composure at a lower price. Baffling that AMD would even bother with this, in much the same way that Intel shouldn't have bothered with the 11 series, like the 11900K. It just causes more damage than it does good. The stack remains the same at 1440p, though AMD loses a few points further here, so let's just move on. Red Dead Redemption 2 has the 4500 at 120 FPS average, allowing the i3-12100F a 17% lead. The 4500 manages to be notably worse than an R5-3600, and once again, the R7-2700X. In true Intel fashion, AMD can't even beat its own CPUs. It's as if AMD watched the 11 series CPU launch when Intel got pulled by a black hole of its own self-destruction 
And AMD said, hey, we want some of that. We're not done yet though. There's more entertainment value left in this lemon. The R5 4500 manages 99 FPS average in Far Cry 6, allowing the 12100F a 20% lead in average FPS and a lead in lows, even though this is one of the more graphically bound titles. The only place where the 12100F doesn't make the 4500 look not completely inept is production testing, which is where AMD's older CPUs take over at making the 4500 look completely inept. In Blender Cycles rendering on the CPU, the R5 4500 required 25 minutes to complete the render, which is slightly worse than the R5 3600. The 12100F is worse here, allowing the 4500 a lead of 19% time reduced, and that's because our Blender testing is almost entirely thread and core bound, with some reliance on frequency. Adobe Premiere has the R5 4500 at an aggregate score of scrubbing, rendering, and filtering of 614 points, that allows the 3600 a lead of 6.2%, with the 2700X leading by 15%, and it's pretty old. The i3 12100F takes a backseat here, but the only difference is a 4% advantage for the 4500. For a gaming PC with some mixed use, it'd be far better to have the 12100F and take the slight hit in Premiere. But it's not all good for the 4500. Adobe Photoshop puts it at 795 points, with the 3600 leading by 9%. It's getting worse. The 12100F comes back swinging as well with a massive 21% lead when aggregating the scored results of warps, filters, transforms, blends, saves, and other Photoshop functions. Compiling code doesn't look much better. With Chromium compiling, the 4500 lands just behind the 12100F for time required to complete the compile. Neither is good here, but there's also no reason to get the 4500 if it's technically worse, while also being worse almost everywhere else. The 3600 has a significant lead as well, reducing time required by 21%. We'll look at power consumption last. In this one, with an all-core blender workload, the R5 4500 pulled about 52 watts at the EPS 12 volt cables before the VRM efficiency calculations, and that has it at about the 12100F's power consumption. So there truly is no value here. So in conclusion, don't buy the R550. <laughs> oh, wait. Actually, I said 5500. I meant to say 4500, but don't buy the R5 5500 either. So the 4500 is truly a waste in just about every way. This is a waste of AMD's credibility. It's a waste of AMD's reputation and social capital that it has work to gain. Uh, it is a very potent reminder for people that no, of course, AMD's not your friend and it never was. This is particularly annoying for reviewers. You'll see a lot of us reminding people of this because for years we were seeing, well, you should support AMD just because they're the only competition. That's not how it works. Like they have to actually make something that's good. You can't just be the underdog and that's the only reason to get pity money. The product has to be worth buying. AMD has products that are worth buying. It's not this. This is simply a waste and bad. I mean, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. So that's our review of the 4500. Uh, I'm not going to recap it any further because there's nothing further really to say. Most of it was said before the charts and the charts just sort of drove the dagger into the heart a little bit. So when we got through the wad of cash, AMD had stuffed in there as a protector, but 130 bucks, you should buy an Intel i3-12100 instead of 12100F if you want to save a little money. Uh, and that's going to be it. So thanks for watching. At least it was fun to review. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net to help us out directly. If you'd like to get one of our toolkits, for example, which we've just added a seven-year retroactive warranty to, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersaccess for bonus videos. We'll see you all next time.